Why is the problem of quantum gravity so hard? Let me try to give you some intuition starting from uh, the einstein hilbert action. So we have something like this. The action in uh, general relativity, classical general relativity, is of the form 1 over the Newtonian constant. Then here we might have other, uh, other terms like uh, 8 pi and also c to the c to the fourth so the speed of light to the fourth but here since this is only the i mean the, the most important part i will keep only the gravitational constant so we will consider units such that the speed of light is equal to one and also the reduced plan planck constant is equal to one and then here we have an integral over d4 x square root of minus the determinant of the metric tensor and then we have the ricci scalar now when we expand the metric tensor g mu nu in uh, terms of the kind uh, era mu nu which is the lorentz metric tensor so this is uh, the metric tensor when space is flat plus and then here i'm going to consider a term of the kind h mu nu which is uh, to be considered a perturbation of the minkowski metric and then here let's multiply this by the square root of g which is a uh, the gravitational constant here. By expanding the action in terms of this perturbation h, which at first is considered to be small, one can rewrite the action itself in terms of uh, the perturbation, and in particular in terms of uh, products of derivatives of h. So we have some terms of the kind uh, dh dh with uh, some contraction of indices of this kind, but also of other kinds, so it, it is quite complicated because it, contain, it contains uh, several terms, and uh, I have uh, derived uh, the um, complete formula in uh, the course uh, called uh, quantum gravity from gravitational waves to gravitons. If you're interested, but I will not be interested in the details in this video, and I will just be interested in the form of the action to try to let you understand why the problem of quantum gravity is difficult. Now, if we consider this factor of um, square root of g here in the action, since we have products of dh dh, something like this, that we can simply schematically rewrite as dh squared without specifying all the indices and so on, because we are just interested in the form, not in the actual indices and contraction of indices and so on. So this factor of square root of g will appear as g because it will be square root of g squared and therefore this uh, g will cancel this g here in the denominator. So this action will become something like this, integral over d4x and then we have something like dh squared, like this. Now this action is precise only if the perturbation h, or if you want this h menu, is small and goes to zero. So it's as if g menu goes to era menu, which is the Lorentz metric. But if uh, this is not the case, we can think that we can expand the action in terms of powers of h menu, in particular powers of h menu multiplied by the square root of g, because this is the actual term that needs to be small, all of this, such that the action can be written like this, like that. But if this is not the case, then here we have something like this. So we have a first order term, which is one, which uh, when multiplied by this will give us the, um, the action when h menu goes to zero, or in particular, when this term goes to zero. And then we have uh, terms of the kind, so terms proportional to h, which should be multiplied by the square root of g. Then we have uh, h uh, squared times g, so it would be just uh, the square root of g squared, plus, and then you have uh, higher order terms. Now, from this expansion, we have to try to think what these corrections lead to, especially when we consider large energies. So when uh, we consider an action, uh, and in particular when we, when we consider a unit system such that the Planck constant, the reduced Planck constant is equal to the speed of light, which is equal to one, 
we know that we can measure energy in terms of mass and uh, the units of g can be rewritten by considering for example the fact that uh, energy is equal to the gravitational constant so I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of units the gravitational constant times mass squared divided by a length is equal to an energy now mass is equal to energy so we can replace this mass with e if you want so this is equal to e squared and then of course we have something like this so one is equal to ge over l which means that this quantity here is dimensionless so this is how you have to interpret this equation but due to the fact that uh, h bar is equal to one in this unit system it means that energy times time is also equal to one or actually it is dimensionless because h bar can be, can be measured in terms of uh, energy times uh, time because h bar is indeed uh, energy divided by frequency and frequency is uh, the inverse of time so energy times time is dimensionless and this means that this can be written as g divided by tl where uh, t is time and l is space but since the speed of light is equal to one we have that length divided by time is dimensionless because the speed of light is dimensionless therefore length is the same thing as time so we can rewrite it as g divided by l squared length squared or if you want time squared g divided by time squared and from here you see that time is the inverse of energy so this is equal to g times e squared simple as that if you want and um, from here you can see that g is uh, 1 over e squared so it's one over energy squared and uh, if you consider the the value of g even in this natural unit system this constant is small therefore this ratio here should also be small which means that this e must be very large so this is the idea and therefore here you can rewrite it as so this g can be replaced by one over e squared and the square root of g can be replaced by 1 over e. Now these terms here become preponderant, become important when this uh, deviation from the flat space becomes large. So when h is large. And if h is large you can understand that the energy, the gravitational energy becomes large and there are major distortions of space-time and therefore these uh, effects all these terms become more and more important because it, as, as you can see when the energy is large these terms here will explode even if as i said this e here is very large so there are some uh, values of energy which are greater than e such that an infinite amount of terms that you have here become large and uh, it's exactly at that point that this action does not really make sense because we have a lot of infinities that appear here or some large quantities that overcomplicate the theory and it is very difficult to make any meaning out of it and as i said earlier this e is very large so it means that the um, usual gravitational action even in, in even in this simplified form is still valid and uh, when it is written in this simple form it gives rise to the concept of uh, gravitons and gravitational waves but when gravity becomes large when this phenomenon be becomes large then it becomes more and more difficult to understand the high energy regime